Yo, what is up, everybody? It is Riley's Red Zone here, back with another 2021 NFL Draft film breakdown. Today, I'm watching the film of Kyle Trask, the quarterback from Florida. So, I would like to give a shout out here again to Niner by Nature 88 for suggesting I do a video on Kyle Trask. This should suggest to all of you that if you comment down below a player I should break down, I put priority on those players. So, I'll mention in a bit here who is also on the list for soon coming videos but Kyle Trask is from the University of Florida as I mentioned he's a senior and he's six foot five actually so he's pretty tall for a quarterback especially too uh, and he has some great playmakers uh, Kyle Pitts is an amazing tight end I think he'll be a first round pick next year and Kadarius Tony I don't think will be a first round pick but he's a stud um, I've been a fan of him for over a year now I saw some of his uh, tape from last year and he looked really good at certain times so he's definitely a great playmaker they have some really good players on the offense so just like how I mentioned with Mac Jones last week we can put that into account a little bit today and speaking of today what I'm gonna be watching today we're gonna break down the games against Ole Miss Texas A&M and Georgia all from this year so I'm very excited to see how he turns out in those games he's getting a lot of Heisman hype a lot of first round hype next year's quarterback class is going to be really good so I'm definitely interested to see how well he'll stack up and I do want to mention if you're not subscribed click the subscribe button please it's just one click away and that's all it takes so with that being said, we're going to jump right into watching him against Ole Miss. Here's a second and one. He's going to drop back. He's looking left the entire time. He's going to let it fly in nice pass here to the sideline. He did stare down that whole sideline the whole time, uh, but at least he made the good throw there. Pretty good sideline throw. Gets both feet in bounds as well. Second and eight. Trask dropping back firing over the middle and it's going to be dropped now looking at this one uh once again he is kind of he looks to his left and then he finds it over the center uh he honestly for this throw puts it at a decent spot if you're trying to throw it to 15 there uh it's kind of a risky throw though you're kind of putting your receiver in a spot where he's going to be hit immediately but honestly the positioning if you're going to throw it there is not terrible but look at on the screen who else was open you probably could have thrown it there as well and maybe for sure gotten a catch so it wasn't awful if you're throwing it to 15 it was a terrible position but it's just kind of you know you know he's gonna be hit so he might not catch it third and eight he's dropping back can't find anyone he's gonna roll out to his left and fire it to kyle pitts and that's gonna be first down so Looking at this one, I'm seeing it a little bit. He sometimes seems to get stuck on some reads, but I do like to see him get outside the pocket. He's not incredibly fast, so at least he has a little mobility and finds his playmaker for a first down. Second and six, a little play action. Beautiful back shoulder, except it's dropped. I actually really like this throw. Uh, some of the quarterbacks in this year's class, we've seen multiple with good back shoulder throws. That's another good one. Broken up by the corner a bit, but that's a perfect throw on that one third and goal they run the play action toss it to Kyle Pitts and that's an easy touchdown had to include this play in there because it's a touchdown on his stats uh, but just a simple read kind of just throw it to the flat and he gets in first and 10 we got another fake run here firing it and it is gonna be caught this is actually a pretty nice throw um, receiver is not crazy wide open, but he picks this guy he likes and puts it in a spot where only his guy can make a play. I like that throw right there. Another drive, another fake handoff, and he's going to fire and it's going to be incomplete. But on this one, I have no idea what he saw. I mean, he first of all didn't see the linebacker, and I guess that's okay. You definitely should see that. But even if you're throwing it there, he throws it to like the right of where it would have been I think anyways so uh, not a good throw and not necessarily a good read either he was double covered either way so not a great play there first and ten dropping back stepping up and able to get rid of it and it is gonna be caught for first down way to keep the play alive um, he actually moves with his reads here that was good uh, progression looking through the reads and he actually makes a good throw for first down great play First and 10, dropping back, fires it to left, and it's going to be incomplete. Honestly, uh, they like to give him the sideline throws. It's not terrible. The receiver kind of slips, honestly. It's a little high, but maybe catchable if he didn't slip. 
first and 20. Trask dropping back. Going to fire to the right. It's going to be caught in between three defenders. That was a nice job fitting it in there so the receiver could catch it. Um, kind of looks a little towards the middle and then the right. And that's a good throw to fit it in between three defenders. Second and seven dropping back. He's going to fire it over the middle. And that's going to be caught for a touchdown by Kadarius Tony. And it's not like picture perfect throw, but it's easily a great enough throw to get the catch for a touchdown. Sees the open guy. First and 10, we're in a two minute drill situation here. Trask is moving up in the pocket, trying to make a play, ends up being complete. Kept this in there because we want to see his playmaking ability and I don't think he has a whole ton of it. He definitely can get outside the pocket, but it's not like he's elite in the improvising aspect. First and 10, Trask can't really find anything, so he scrambles out to the right, able to find his dude uh, and get the catch. This is a nice improvising play here, stepping to his left, seeing that he has some space to the right, and able to make a good throw on the run to his receiver. First and 10, dropping back, firing to the left, and it is going to be caught. Wow, this is a nice throw. Uh, he's made some great sideline throws and back shoulders. This is a great back shoulder. Puts it in the spot where only Kyle Pitts can catch it. So that was an awesome throw to see by Trask there. Second and six, second half now. Looking to throw, fires it, and it's going to be caught to Kyle Pitts. There's nothing exceptional about the throw. This is just Kyle Pitts kind of being a beast. But let's see how he progresses through his reads. He kind of looks to his right quickly, but then here he, he's stuck on him the whole play. And he should be. The, the dude on the left, obviously, as you see there, was also wide open. So uh, great plays overall by the receivers on this one, and they get a touchdown out of the play. First and 10 off the play action, trying to find somebody and ends up being sacked and fumbles the football. Um, the blocking is terrible. I mean, look at they double team him and they still can't get it. The tight end misses and then the running back can't keep him distracted. But it's a noting here that he did fumble the ball. So maybe he doesn't have the best carrying ability, but um, he didn't really have too much to work with there on that one. Second and 12 looking to pass fires and it's going to be a little short we've seen him make some good sideline throws today but this one just was not it he was open to just kind of under threw him a bit third and goal kind of a rollout here looking to pass and it's going to be incomplete um not too much here to look at there isn't anybody wide open he probably that was the right guy to throw to i think overall and just couldn't get it done Second and 12, dropping back and a fire it over the middle deep, and that's going to be caught for a touchdown. Now, this one is mostly Kyle Pitts just being a monster, as we've seen multiple times. But this is just like what Mac Jones did, did a few days ago in my breakdown that I did on him. High points the ball, so only Pitts can get it. Uh, Trask knows that Pitts has the size advantage, so I actually really like that throw right there. Well, we just watched the first game of the day against Ole Miss, and what did I think? My suspicion is correct. He's a very good college quarterback. Uh, I like to see what he does at the college level, uh, but there weren't any crazy things that definitely stick out uh, on tape. He's got a very good arm, not quite Zach Wilson, Trey Lance level, but high up there, like better than Mac Jones. I have not gotten to Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields yet. Uh, but a very good arm. He'll be great in the NFL in that aspect. He has a fine um, arm. But the mobility aspect of his game, not a high point for him. Um, just kind of there. He can move outside the pocket if he has to, but he does not excel in that. But he honestly doesn't have to a whole bunch if you're 6'5 and can, you know, stand tall in the pocket. That's what's got to, you know, it's going to be important that he actually stands tall in the pocket uh, because he's not particularly fast outside of it. Uh, what I did like to see, he did excel in a few areas, which was the back shoulder throws. I like to see those in the sideline throws. Did great on both of those. And I also liked that last play where he put the ball in the spot where his receiver can get it uh, only. Nobody else, you know, on the field can get it. So I like to see that. Um, I am going to say his weakness, and I'll agree with what some other people say, is um, he kind of struggles to move off of some reads. He struggles processing. 
you're going to buy a laptop and you want the Intel i9 or maybe even even if you just need the i7 but you want the Intel i9 processor and he's got maybe an i5 he it's not terrible but it's not good he um I, that's why i wanted to cover him moving off of reeds because he honestly didn't make too many outstanding uh moving off of reed plays so i wanted to cover that to see you know how good he really is and that's probably his weakness right now is the game seems very fast for him and he's gonna have to get used to that if he wants to go another level up to the nfl so i definitely think that's something he can work on but let's watch him against texas a&m to see if we can see him improve in that aspect of his game we're starting here at a third and six they're on the opposite side of the field he's gonna try to roll out and just can't get it wanted to include this one as a playmaking ability once again not elite in this category but i do like him at least putting the effort in to try and even trying to truck stick to get the first down so good effort but just can't get it there second and 14 here he's dropping back he's gonna fire it deep and it's gonna be dropped now looking at this one i don't like seeing that risk taking here but to be honest, nobody else, at least on screen, is open whatsoever. And at least when he makes this throw, he puts it up where it is difficult to be intercepted. It could have been still, but at least he makes it difficult for that to be um, interesting play there. First and goal, dropping back. Gonna fire it to the left, and it's incomplete. But honestly, that's not a terrible throw. Um, sees the guy open in the end zone. Puts it in a decent spot, just can't quite get the feet in. Third and goal here, dropping back, firing it, and it's going to be caught for a touchdown. Kyle Pitts is such a beast, dude. He's amazing. Uh, but honestly, this is what you should do in this situation. Could have thrown it to the outside player, but why not give it to your best playmaker? First and ten. Trask is going to fake it to the right and fire it deep, and it's going to be caught. This is a beautiful throw. I love this play right here. It's enough of a back shoulder where he puts it in a spot where only his receiver can catch it. This might be one of the best plays we've seen so far. Love that play. First and 10. Trask rolling out to his right. Going to end up firing it over to Kyle Pitts, and it's incomplete. Now, the fun side of me says, wow, that's kind of cool. Imagine if they would have got that touchdown. If he just throws it maybe farther, making him back up instead of this thing where it kind of is a back shoulder, you know, like makes him turn, um, maybe they could have got a touchdown. But you look at it, the check down's right there. You don't have to be the hero. Just take the check down right there or even start scrambling and get that guy to block for you. So I think they should have just done that instead. Third and six now, trying for the end zone. It's going to be caught. Touchdown. Patient. Does a Mahomes-esque move off his back foot here, kind of, and gets it in the end zone. Good throw, good read. First and ten. Play action. Trask looking to throw it deep, and it's intercepted. What did this guy see? Th this is triple covered. I know it's tempting to throw the deep ball, but I have no clue what he saw here. I, there's three guys, and if you are going to make that throw, he definitely underthrew it. I do not know what just happened right there. That was not very good. No idea what he saw. Third and four. Looking to throw, firing it deep, and okay, this makes up for it. That was beautiful. Oh my goodness, leads this guy up field. I like how he leads his guy away from the corner, actually. Uh, I really like that personally, that he made that throw in that specific area. Um, that was awesome. First and 10, dropping back, rolling a little bit to his left, and pump fakes it, and he's going to be sacked. I think he just needs to realize he isn't amazing outside the pocket, so you need to get rid of it right there to that check down, or just throw it away. At that point, held on to the ball too long there. First and 10, a little play action here. Trask is going to fire it. Good read here. Almost gets a touchdown to Kadarius Tony. Overall, just looks at it, finds his guy right away, makes the good throw and a good read. Second and goal. Quick little pass here to the running back. 
touchdown. Had to include this in because it's a touchdown on his stats, but just another system play. First and 10, play action. Trask trying to get a big play to win the game, and it's going to be batted down. This is overall a great play by the corner. I see what Trask saw here. Not much he can do, really, to be honest. So, I guess that was a decent try. Um, unfortunately, they fumbled. Yep, the next play, the running back fumbled the ball. So, that's unfortunate. So, they ended up losing the game. But, what were my thoughts? Honestly, a lot of similar things as the last one. Uh, we saw his weaknesses, you know, not elite outside the pocket. Um, good back shoulders, good sideline throws arm is there now what we also did see still was the lack of the processor there were a few of those plays i mean that interception honestly i don't i that was probably one of the worst plays i've seen on film over the last few weeks um i don't know what he saw there uh so i'm gonna build some comparisons now keep in mind my comparisons are not always accurate to different elements like you could make ceiling and floor comparisons as in what's the best this player could be and what's the worst it could be uh maybe you do it strictly off of size i kind of do a mix of everything and most of the time i just do it off of play style so i'm gonna say a name here that i do not personally think kyle trask will ever be as good as maybe he could be but i'm not gonna say like coming into the rookie year He's not going to be as good as this player that I'm going to say, but there's elements of his game that remind me of it. I'm going to say Matt Ryan, who's also six foot five, so that goes with that same kind of body type there, um, and also has an okay mobility. He's on the slower side, um, and a lot of times, you know, I think can be slower on reads. You know, just look at Julio and stuff. He's probably better in that aspect than Kyle Trask, but I see the size and the, um, you know mobility aspect is very similar and another name kind of similar is i'm gonna name uh nick Foles in that aspect um nick Foles is 6'6 so once again very similar and Foles has never been outstanding at things he can sometimes question the reads but he's okay so that's what i'm gonna say about trask is those are two players i'd say as play styles not you know ceiling floor or anything like that but just kind of the those are two names i throw out there so let's watch him against georgia to see if he can change our mind in any of the aspects of his game we're starting with their second drive of the game actually and they're gonna fire it deep and it's unfortunately dropped i actually like this throw from trask if you trust your guy to make this play it's not in a terrible spot very catchable maybe a little high but i think it's very catchable so I like that play. Second and four, he's looking to pass and actually he's gonna throw it for a first down. Really good play here. Just sees the open guy, makes the easy throw first down. Pretty simple to see here, wide open. Third and four, dropping back, takes the check down very smartly. I agree with this right here. They get a touchdown out of it. Overall, great read, just sees the open guy. You don't have to make the big play, just take the check down, and he gets in for a touchdown. Second and 14, looking to his left. He's going to fire it over there, and it's going to be caught for a first down. I really like this throw. Very simple wheel route, but he knows it's going to be open the whole time. Lofts it up there, so his running back can make a good play for the catch. First and 10, play action for Trask. Going to fire it, and it's going to be caught. This is another one. Kyle Pitts is an absolute beast, but honestly, this is a very good throw, no matter who this is. Puts it in a high spot, back shoulder-ish area where his receiver can kind of reach over the DB's back and make the catch. So I actually like the throw, even though that's Kyle Pitts making an amazing play. Third and 10, looking to pass here, and it's going to be intercepted, unfortunately, and it actually unfortunately also goes for a touchdown so that just cost him six points but there's two things here i can't tell which receiver he was throwing to it's kind of in between it's a good play by the corner if you're going to number three number three you gotta put a little bit more effort in there but he uh <laughs> doesn't move towards the ball and also misses that tackle um but if you're going to the other receiver that's a really poor throw uh just kind of also Honestly, maybe poor play design, putting two receivers that close to each other. But overall, I just wouldn't, I, you don't want to pass in that area if there's that many players. So, unfortunately, that cost them six points. 
first and ten. Trask dropping back, going to fire it deep, and it's going to be caught. Beautiful throw. Puts it in a spot where his receiver can catch it in stride and continue going. This is a beautiful throw overall. I really like this play design, and that's a great throw by Trask. Second and nine. Dropping back. Trask firing over the middle, and it's going to be dropped, but... It's not a great decision considering there's three defenders in the area, but at the same time, he fitted in that window that he needed to. Got absolutely laid out right there. Kyle Pitts got hit hard. So is it the best decision to throw it there? No, but if you are going to, he actually put it in a decent spot. Second and six, Trask looking to throw, throws it right there wide open. This is a simple play. Obviously, the receiver's wide open, but I guess a good throw. Nobody even covering him. Great play design. Good throw as well. Third and one on the next drive already towards the end zone, and that's a touchdown. Beautiful throw and catch. Puts it in a spot where only his receiver makes a play, and that's a great play by the receiver as well. Credit to both people on the play, both Trask and the receiver. That was awesome. First and 10, next drive, throwing, beautiful read right there. It's a simple play, sees the guy open, and leads him towards the sideline so he can get the first down. Good throw. First and 10, play action, Trask, stepping up in the pocket, finds Kadarius Tony for the first down. Good job by Trask here, not forcing anything right away, and actually standing tall in the pocket, stepping up and finding the open receiver first down jumping to the fourth quarter third and eight here trask throwing it to the left and just overthrows it high um honestly don't love that decision if you're going for the first down it's kind of a shorter route to run but if so you need to throw it lower so your guy can catch it and maybe make a play for a first down third and eight dropping back making the throw here to the sideline it's going to be dropped honestly a pretty good throw here Back shoulder again, just bobbled. He's really good at back shoulder throws. First and 10, Trask dropping back, stepping up in the pocket, fires to the right, and it's going to be caught. This is a very nice throw. Has the pocket presence to step up into the throw and the pocket, and actually throws a back shoulder here that's very smart because it leads the receiver towards the sideline away from the corner to make it an easier play to catch. First and 10, Trask dropping back almost intercepted probably should have been um not a terrible decision honestly but threw it a bit late there if you're gonna make that play and lucky that was not intercepted third and nine dropping back trask is going to roll out to the left and make a nice throw Ooh, juke move by Kadarius tony for a nice first down once again he stayed patient this is what you need to do in the nfl if you're gonna stay in the pocket you need to stand strong moves a little bit while on the run makes a good Play. This is a also really good play by Kadarius Tony right there to put the little back juke on him so they can get a first down. Good play. Second and nine, looking to pass, makes the throw almost intercepted. Probably should have been. And they're all they're asking you to do is just finish the game, and they can't get it done right now. And I'm honestly surprised too that they're even passing on a second down and nine, but that was almost intercepted. Fourth and four, they're throwing it, and it's incomplete. We've seen it though here. They trust him with the game on the line and has not worked out a few times almost three plays It could have been intercepted, but that was the last play we're looking at in the Georgia game Well, we just watched three games worth of film on Kyle Trask So I'm gonna give my final opinions his strengths weaknesses where I'd pick him and What maybe his system is and that type of thing? um He has a lot of potential definitely I think his ceiling is very high he doesn't have any crazy traits that for example make him better than any other quarterback in this class but he is very strong in many areas his arm is very good um like I said not top of the class you know like not Zach Wilson Trey Lance level I have once again I have not covered Fields or Lawrence yet kind of I will be covering Justin Fields though next so I'll finally be able to see him because I assume those two will be my top two quarterbacks. So judging it though with the other three I've looked at, I'd probably put Trask's arm at number three. It's better than Mac Jones, but um, not quite as good as Lance or Wilson. Um, his mobility is definitely, I'd say, the lowest. Um, 
not very good outside the pocket. Um, but he honestly doesn't need to if he's six foot five too often. I mean, it's important that you're able to, but is, if he can stand strong in the pocket is the real big thing. Then maybe he won't need to as much, but not great in that aspect. Um, back shoulder throws. That's a strength. Um, definitely, I think I'd put Wilson's back shoulder at number one. I'd maybe put Trask's at number two, um, followed by Jones and then Lance. And also sideline throws, um, very good at those. Those kind of go hand in hand. So he's very good in those aspects. I will say, though, his processor is definitely down there. Not very good at all. He really struggled coming off of reads. Um, we saw at the end there, three times in a row, they put him. They put the game in his hands. All he had to do was make a five-yard play, and it almost got intercepted every time. So he kind of gets stuck sometimes, I think, on a preset read kind of chooses his favorite and goes from there um and a few times though we saw him move off of reads and that's important that he's able to do that because he'll need that in the nfl so that would be great for him to get a little bit more experience with that um and that's all i'm gonna say really he didn't have besides that i mean just maybe needs to work on his football iq getting used to the game maybe not you know there were a few bad decisions i'm saying but he's got a lot of potential i like i like trask here um, so let's talk about this. Where would I pick him? I'm going to, like, for example, when I'm making my spreadsheet, which I'm going to actually share with everybody, um, I'll put it in the description at some point when I kind of have it close to complete for the players I'm doing. Um, it'll have all my opinions on every player. It'll have pictures. It'll have their stats. It'll have all types of information, my strengths and weaknesses, and my draft grade. What I'm trying to say here is I'm going to say late first for Trask. What I really mean is 20s. He's, I don't think he should go top 20, but I could see a team taking him at, you know, maybe 25. Personally, I would probably pick him between, let's just say, 30 and 64. That's that's where I would pick him. I think he's a second-round player. Um, once again, like I said with Mac Jones, the worst this dude's going to be is an amazing backup, but I think this dude has a lot more potential than that. Um, I still stick with, I think, the Matt Ryan comparison as his play type, but his ceiling is not that high. Uh, I, I personally don't think he does have a high ceiling, though. I just don't know if he'll ever be an MVP, but he definitely has a high ceiling. He'll be really good if he develops. So going with that, I think if he can sit behind somebody for a year and really develop, um, I think that would be great. For example... If you're Atlanta, may you take a not. I think they probably would take a quarterback in that situation in the first round, but maybe they take him top of the second round, you know, right behind my comp for him. That would be good, but in general, I think he just needs a year to learn. Um, I think a lot of quarterbacks do. Honestly, looking in this class, I think everybody after Lawrence, Fields, and Wilson will need some time. I think Lance will need some time to sit as well. Um, but I think he just needs a little bit of time to learn the game at that speed he's still struggling and you know that the NFL is even faster than SEC football um and so right now honestly my rankings for quarterbacks would probably be one Lawrence two Fields and once again I need to watch those guys I haven't you know officially but I'm that's pretty much everybody's consensus but then I'm gonna go Zach Wilson three then I'm gonna say technically like four a Trey Lance, and I was not a huge Trey Lance fan, to be honest. I think he's a little overrated, um, and I'd say 4B Kyle Trask. So those two are kind of together for me, and I'd go Mac Jones 5 right now, I think is how I'd rank it. Now, I want to quick say the next quarterbacks I'm looking at, I'm going to do a video on Justin Fields, and then after that, I've been requested to do Ian Book as, as well as De'Ara King. So I'm going to be covering all of those players. So make sure, once again, you hit the subscribe button so you're going to be notified for all those videos coming up soon. I'm going to try to get the Justin Fields one out maybe even, you know, this week. You know, another one or even, honestly, in the next few days as I have a little bit more time right now because of Thanksgiving break. So... That's my opinion on Kyle Trask. Kind of a late first. Should not go behind the second, though. He should not fall to pass the second round. So, that's my opinion on Kyle Trask. And I hope I will see you guys in the next film breakdown video or other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching. <laughs>